what <laughs> happened? I mean, this is uh, its like almost any parent's nightmare. So there you have it. Here's Greta Van Susten. She's on her show with a couple. And it's any parent's nightmare. What happened here? Was it a kidnapping? Did they find their child face down floating in a swimming pool? What could possibly be any parent's nightmare? Go ahead. Stop the freaking tape. Did you see what I saw? Do you see what I see? He got to sit there. She goes, go ahead. Permission to speak. But carry on. What is any parent's nightmare? Well, there was a, a mix-up uh, with the clinic. Um, basically, uh, the wrong embryo, our embryo, was implanted into another woman. And uh, the pregnancy was viable. And we found out that uh, she was having our baby. Wait a second. That's any parent's nightmare? Well, we found out that our embryo had been inserted into another woman. No, I don't think that's any parent's nightmare. I don't think every parent out there is saying, gee, I wonder what's going on with my embryos right now down at the lab. Call me crazy. But I think there are things that are considered more of a nightmare for most parents. You have to be in a pretty small group of people for this to be your nightmare. Well, I suppose it could just be a nightmare that you have. But for it to be a realistic nightmare, you know, the kind where you wake up in a cold sweat, like, oh my god, I think my embryos got inserted in the wrong person. Yeah, that kind of nightmare. You're in a small group. Give me a break. This is any parent's nightmare. Greta, are you that out of touch? I love you, Greta, but are you that out of touch that you think every parent out there has a dish? What are you going to call it? A bowl? A tube? Of embryos down at the local clinic? Are you out of your freaking mind? No, this is a selective group of people's nightmare. There's a small handful of people out there who heard this and said, Oh my God, I wonder where my embryos are. The rest of us keep track of our embryos. Mm -hmm. Shannon, when you first, I know, I know you wrote about it in the book, but mm -hmm. Shannon, um, who told you, and what was your first thought when you found out that uh, some other woman was having uh, your your baby? I was horrified and shocked. The doctor actually told us we had received calls, and we came into the office, and I thought I had an appointment scheduled for the following week, and I thought they were just moving up the appointment. I had a lot of questions, so I thought there might be a new program or some new procedure. So, in a million years, I never would have guessed that they would tell us that there's been an incident, your embryos have been thawed, and oh, by the way, they were transferred into another woman, and she's pregnant. I was just floored. I mean, I, I was speechless. You were not? That's a lie. You were not speechless? You have never been speechless in your life. I saw when this video happened. Let me go back to the beginning. And Greta asked a question, and you turn to your husband, and you say, go ahead. And trust me, folks, in the rest of this video, that is the only sentence he got out in his completion. That is the only thing he was able to say uninterrupted in his entirety. Through the rest of this interview, he gets in a few words here and a few words there. If she takes a breath, he tries to throw something in. She cuts him off. I think this is why they got to go down to the lab to make some kids. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. How did you reach out to find out where your baby was? I mean, what the status of the pregnancy was? You know, Take me through those steps. Okay. Well, we were so shocked by the moment. Um... I mean, at first, it was something where you just sort of take your breath away, and then all these questions uh, but the, start but to But the happen. doctor called. He said, what can we, we, we do for you? And I said, we want to know if she's willing to keep well, the Well, he said the as soon as he got more information, he would call yeah. back uh, a yeah. couple days later, and we finally got that call. That was a long two days. And, and then about uh, four days later, we got a number for their attorney, and then I secured an attorney, too, and then attorneys talked back and forth. We had no idea who they were, their names, for two and a half months. Yeah, have your fetus call my fetus. See what I'm talking about here? This woman doesn't let this guy talk for anything. He gets in two, three words, she's jumping in on top of him. This is why, folks, this is why they got to go down in the lab to make a baby, because they're sitting around the house, and he's like, hey, I got an idea. You know what we could do? We could go upstairs in the bedroom, pop a movie in, make some popcorn, and she's like, with extra butter, great idea. Let's go watch a movie. This is what's going on at their house. This guy can't get anything, anything, let alone a word, in edgewise. So they got to go down to the lab to make a baby. Hey, embryos get switched up. It happens. Well, 
She looked exactly. I shouldn't say mother. I mean, I don't well, even know if mother's the correct word. I mean, whatever word the, we want to use. The gestational for this, carrier, right. Ah, yes. The famous gestational carrier. Yeah. Uh, well, she looked completely, thankfully, normal. She looked completely normal? Well, looks can be deceiving. Guess what, lady? About the time you're involved in an embryo switch up down at the local baby clinic, you're no longer considered normal. That might be a news flash for you, but about the time you're wondering if the embryo inside of you is yours or not, something abnormal has happened. News flash. From exactly how her attorney had de just described her, and they were. Uh, I mean, it was just tense. It was awkward. And we went in there, and I just started talking to her, letting her know how grateful we were for what they were, were doing. And yeah. I could only imagine the pain that they had gone through, but let her know that, hey, you know, a lot just of people... Just to let her know how thankful we were and grateful. Right. And that uh, what we thought she was doing was above and beyond, and we were just, just blessed to... You know, have yeah. someone like her and we just wanted to open up communication and we promised we wouldn't intrude on the in their life you're not going to intrude in her life you're going to be standing there waiting for this baby to come down the birth canal like a linebacker waiting for a running back to pop through a hole in the offensive line are you freaking kidding me you're not going to interfere in your life yeah thanks for carrying this baby for nine months and popping it out now give it to me it's mine but we're not going to interfere in your life. It's not like we're going to come over and take some meatloaf off your plate or something. You know, just a little minor infraction here. Give me my baby. Um, and just gratitude. Did she say anything? I mean, she was obviously gracious enough to make this as easy a process as possible. But at any point did she say, look, uh, I'm carrying this child. I'm, I want, I'm going to fight you on this child no, or, or, or not? No, they said right away that um, they realized it was our child. They, we had talked about this, they knew that once the baby was born, there had been legal precedent. Set. And legal precedent rears its ugly head. Yes, apparently Judge Bozo, down at the Third Circus Court of Appeals, has heard a case or two like this before. He's ruled, it's our baby. So we would wow. obtain our parental rights, but they did say... Um, we, it was we, their belief system. Right. And we, they we said knew. they had strong beliefs in the sanctity of life. Well, I guess they did have some pretty strong beliefs in the sanctity of life. Because usually the sanctity of life applies to, you know, a normal life. But apparently, their beliefs in the sanctity of life are so strong that they believe even a baby that's created in a lab somewhere. You know, petri dish, test tube, insert. Apparently... Their belief in the sanctity of life is so strong that they believe that life is sanctimonious even when it's shot out of a turkey baster for crying out loud. That is a strong belief in the sanctity of life. And said that uh, right away they knew what they were going to do. But at the same time, we, um, if we hadn't been wanting this child, they would have kept this, this yeah. baby. I mean, they asked us, were you planning on having more kids? And I said yes. Well, apparently they're pretty unintelligent, too. They asked if you were planning to have no more kids, right? No, we're planning to have more kids. No, what happened was, <laughs> it's a funny story. My husband was cleaning out the garage, and he was like, Honey, what are you going to do with all these embryos out here? And I was like, I don't know. I didn't know what to do with them. So I said, well, we'll just take them down to the lab, keep them down there for a while. You know, it's kind of like storage for embryos, right? Of course she's planning to have more babies. She's got embryos in the lab somewhere. I had an appointment scheduled the following week to start the whole process. So that was good to know. Do you have, do you have any continuing relationship with her? We do. Yes. We, we continue to email. Yes, she friended me on Facebook. Um, more emails that I send photos. We, we call. We saw them between Christmas and New Year's. We're planning another get-together, hopefully, in the next month or so. But definitely and we're really glad that they're willing to continue the relationship i want my son to know who they were and someday thank her personally someday thank her personally are you kidding me you just described this woman yourself as the quote gestational carrier son meet your gestational carrier gestational carrier our son What's up with that? Like, kids don't have a hard enough time growing up in the world. You're going to throw this on him, too? I got a newsflash for you. If you have a child and his closest sibling in age is 20 years older than him, 
He's going to figure out that he was a mistake. But when he comes to you and asks you about it, don't tell him. Don't sit there and lay that on the kid. Yeah, you're a mistake.